So you're sold on the idea of MMA or mobile marketing automation. What do you do next? How do you assess the different vendors in this space? And what are the things that you need to check off to ensure that you're getting the software that you need and that it can handle all of the requirements and demands that your business will place upon it? So in this episode, I wanna show you all of the things that you need to consider when purchasing an MMA solution. Let's jump in. So first of all, when you're considering an MMA solution, you wanna think about the channels that you can broadcast to and that you can communicate with customers uh, in. So the obvious one here, of course, is mobile. We are talking about mobile marketing automation systems. So we're talking about you know, push notifications, in-app messages, maybe in-app inboxes, message centers, feed cards, all of that stuff. Web, in terms of you may want some JavaScript to be able to track these customers across web as well. I think web notifications, web push, is something that you need to uh, definitely tick off uh, as a requirement. They should be able to mix and match some of the mobile stuff with email as well. So for, for example, um, a user deletes your app, the app has gone off the phone, can't really do any, mo any mobile marketing anymore, but you can send them an email, so it could be an exit survey when they've uninstalled the app. You could ask them, you know, out of the mobile experience, what did they see or what did they not see that meant they, they opted out and they exited. Social, um, can the platform also operate in social channels? Maybe you wanna do some retargeting in social channels to remind people that you have an app and to come back and use it. Maybe it's a special offer that deep links back into the app. We see social as a channel with increasing importance for driving re-engagement within your app. So that kind of covers off channels. Number two, make sure the content management system is very easy. I've talked before in other videos about jobs to be done. We recently did some research around why people buy mobile marketing automation systems and what some of the driving factors are. One of the things that came up as part of our research quite heavily was the ease of use of the system and how could marketing actually use it and did they adopt um, the chosen vendor. So make sure that it's very easy to create and maintain content and campaigns you don't want your marketing team messing around with any HTML or any XML or JSON or, or anything like that. It should be point and click, drag and drop, very easy for them, them to come in and with confidence build a campaign without calling up the IT team and getting bogged down and frustrated in the process. Number three, you need to kind of consider whether you're gonna go for like a gigantic all-in-one bundle, super massive product with a massive uh, cost implication, or if the vendor has a number of products or modules that you can choose from based on your needs that kind of click together to form an integrated suite, or whether you're going for like the, the 747 jumbo jet of a mobile marketing uh, MMA solution, and they just give you everything at one probably pretty uh, high annual cost. So all-in-one versus modules or products products. Number four, data management. You need to make sure that you can easily import your data from a, maybe a previous solution or from your in-house system. So you can easily stand up the solution. You can get your data in, but easy on, easy off. You want to be also, you want to ensure that you can export everything. You own this data. You want to make sure that you own the data and that you can also easily export it you can bring it back into one of your own systems, or if you want to switch vendor, if you're not happy with whoever you choose, that you can easily, uh, portability is an issue that you can you know, get up and you can leave and you can take this data with you. Number five, CRM integration. Now I am going to be talking about partner application integration in, in a moment, but what I mean uh, by CRM integration, do they, does the vendor have open APIs so that if your CRM isn't exactly out of the box, off the shelf. It may be behind the scenes, it might be custom within your organization, it may be buried deep behind your firewall. Does the vendor have a solutions uh, or a services team to consult with you on how to get this data and securely expose it out of the organization securely through the firewall and then pipe it into the chosen vendor? Do they have any expertise around this? Or is it just like a cookie cutter? Well, we have this CRM vendor integration and that one. And if you have a custom solution, 
good luck. You want to make sure that people are open and that you can work with them and it'll help you build integrations into the system as is necessary. So number six, real time segmentation. You would be absolutely amazed at the vendors in the MMA space that don't actually support real time segmentation. A lot of vendors, they batch their data. It could be done maybe every day. And more frequently, we see every hour they're updating their segments. Pulsate and some of the more modern solutions are real-time segmentation, meaning that when an event happens, when someone changes their location, that they are swept into the segments that you've defined, and that happens within milliseconds. Very, very important. You want to also be sure that you can filter data not only on the kind of the um, out-of-the-box segment rules that the vendor gives you, but that you can also filter data based on custom data that you supply either via the app or from your CRM. This is very important. You also want to make sure that you can segment based on not only actions and events in the app, but also behaviors and location data. And of course, I've mentioned it before, I'm going to emphasize it again, real time, that this all happens in an instant. Number seven, some kind of workflow management. And this means that you can mix and match, and I've talked about the different channels up here before, you can mix and match your push with your in-app and your email, and you could do one after the other, and first you could send an email. If they don't open the email, then two days later you wanna send a push. If they don't open the push, do an in-app message, you want a two-day delay buffer between the two, and the first one has a one-hour delay buffer. So this is like a workflow, it's a series of campaigns of different channels that are sent at different times based on different events or the lack of certain events happening. Very useful tool. Number eight, conversion tracking. Do your campaigns actually achieve a goal? Are they successful? And I mean beyond the open rate. So do customers come in from that push campaign and do they update their credit card details or book their first trip or whatever it is? So the idea is that you're event tagging various sections of your app and then you're attributing those events occurring within a given time frame to the campaign and that will be your goal or your conversion rate for that campaign. And that's what I mean by conversion tracking beyond the open rate. Number nine, partner applications. I've talked about you know, your CRM integration and custom APIs, but you also need to think about your, your, your partners. So you could have um, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, Adobe Marketing Cloud, Oracle Marketing Cloud, SAP, all of these different solutions. You wanna make sure that your vendor that you select already has some pre-built plugins to these and some of the other APIs like MailChimp and Twilio and Responses so that you can easily connect your mobile marketing strategy with other tools that you currently use. This is very, very important. Number 10 and the final point I'd like to make is performance and reliability. You wanna make sure that they offer a 99.9 .9 uptime guarantee, that they're displaying publicly all of their APIs, their availability, their incident reports. You wanna make sure they've built out a technical architecture and infrastructure, that it has you know, a content availability network and distribution network that is co-located, securely hosted, is properly um, secured, and that when events come into the system, whether they're in-app or location events, they have an ability to process them very quickly. When you wanna fire up and do a million push notifications on the occasions that you do do that, you wanna make sure that they get out very quickly. And if you have millions of users opening your app at the same time and, and requesting campaigns, that their APIs can deal with that kind of scale. So I would encourage you to ask your vendor about their scalability. If it's something you're worried about, conduct your own scalability tests on their APIs. So that brings me up to my 10th uh, point here for everything you need to know for selecting a mobile marketing uh, automation vendor from the channels to the content management, data management, to the security and scalability, the conversion tracking, and of course, the real time segmentation. If you have any questions at all um, from today's videos, you can leave a comment below. You can send me a tweet. I'll leave my handle below as well. I'm Patrick Letty. Looking forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care.